Hi guys, right, so we're gonna try and finish this stu stupid game with that horrible bear and teach you uh, Islamic practices, um, which obviously is the most logical combination of things that's ever happened. I tried to do this slightly earlier this time so it'd be less scary. Hello, dog. Oh, right. um, but I couldn't get the microphone to work because I'm stupid and suddenly it's really late at night again, so it's even more horrible. Right, okay, we're fine. Let's see if we can spend all five nights with our friend Freddy and learn about the Shahada. So, the Shahada is one of the five pillars of Islam. The pillars as in P-I-L-L-A-R-S, pillars, things that hold something up, okay? So, the five pillars of Islam, oh yeah, you go away, focal man. The five pillars of Islam are these five ideas that hold the religion up. They are going to be in your exam in some form. We don't know exactly how yet, because there's so many different ways they could bring them up. I would be very surprised if the 12 mark, 4 mark or 5 mark question wasn't directly about one of the pillars in some form. If not, the 12 mark question being a comparison of the pillars, that could be really common. I mean, outside of the five pillars of Islam, you'd have to have questions on festivals, um, maybe the jihad, to, to sort of avoid them as the big topics. So I really think these, these are going to come up and there's such a high chance oh yeah I've got to remember to do the how did I do the map? that was it oh he's already gone oh where's that stupid thing gone already there he is right okay you lot told me the little tip was to turn the light on to keep an eye on him so let's turn that light on to keep an eye on him mm, right okay maybe he's not there anymore Oh, he's still there. Okay, I'm going to keep flashing that on and off. Try to keep an eye on him. So, the pillars are these sort of five things that hold the religion together. I'm just going to close that for a little bit so I can concentrate. So, these five things that hold the religion together. Oh, whoops. Okay, he's still there. Is anyone over that way? Is the chicken still there? No, chicken's all still there. Everything else seems fine. Oh, he's right there. So, Oh, hello. Hi. Oh. oh. Oh, what happened? He was in the thing and I hate him so much. So the first of five pillars is called the Shahada. The Shahada is a declaration of faith. It's um, a sentence that all Muslims um, sort of repeat at certain occasions, uh, certainly that they all believe in. Um, that sentence in its that sentence in its most basic form is there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger or is his messenger depending on how you want to exactly sort of phrase it but it's the idea that all Muslims must believe in a single God who is okay you lot all stay there good boys all Muslims must believe in a single God and that is key to their faith when we looked last time at the prophets there was so much focus on the prophets were there to spread oh my god it's always that stupid rabbit the prophet's main role was to come spread the idea that there was one God who is Muhammad, uh, who is Allah, okay? And Muhammad is the messenger. Now, though Sunni Muslims have that idea, Shia Muslims add this little sort of twist to it. Shia Muslims add, and Ali is the friend of Allah. And this is the idea that um, Ali, who's one of the imamate, as we talked about uh, last time, Ali, uh, the, the son-in-law of Muhammad, is the friend of Allah. He is not considered a prophet, okay? He is not considered a prophet, okay? He's not quite that um, highly exalted. He's not considered to be chosen directly by God in that sense, but he is the friend of Allah. The Shahada is the first of the five pillars. Does this mean it's the most important? Not necessarily, but there's lots of reasons why you could argue it's most important. Uh, it's, you could argue it's most important as it sums up all the things that a Muslim believes in. Well, the most important thing a Muslim believes in, not everything, but the most important ideas of their faith. You could argue it's most important as, oh, that rabbit. You could argue it's most important because it's the first thing a baby often hears when they're born. They'll often whisper the shahada into the baby's ear along with the adhan, the call to prayer. Um, it sh it's often the last thing a Muslim hears when they die. This would be the idea that their life has begun and ended with their religion, okay? That it has started and ended with their faith. That rabbit's still there, and I'm kind of happy about that. Um, uh, and um, it's like 
it's also said in times of sort of hardship. So you, you might see like footballers before they take a penalty often saying something if they're Muslim footballers, Mohamed Salah, um, and Sadio Mane. That could be, uh, I can guarantee, but that could often be uh, the shahada, okay, this this sort of sentence. And if you want to become a Muslim, um, the, the the main way to convert is to say the shahada three times uh, in the witness of like a, a true believer. So that that's how you convert. Oh, I hate this so much. Why did I shut that door? Okay, rabbit's still there. He's fine. Those two are still there. Everyone seems fine. So. Let's just stay still. My battery's running a bit low, but oh, this puts me so on edge. Um, so I would say there's some pretty strong arguments for the shahada being the most important pillar. However, if there's a 12 mark question, I'd say in some ways the easiest thing to argue is that all the pillars should be equally valued. Okay, If that is the 12 mark, if the 12 mark is something like the shahada is the most important pillar, which there have been questions similar in the past, I would probably go, oh, the shahada is really important because of the reasons already said. Then I'll talk about the other pillars, which I'm going to mention in a second. They'll be like, oh, these are really important. These may be the most important one. Oh, it's all gone off. Oh, now the chicken's there. So where's he gone? Oh, my God. Door. Oh, I hate this. I hate this. Why do any of you play these stupid games? Oh, they're awful. Okay. Um, then you'd say, oh, that all the pillars should be, he's just there creeping me out. You're just over there being a freak. I don't like you, Evie. You, you've jumped out at me occasionally, but actually normally you just chill out there, and that's fine. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm leaving that door closed, because that idiot's behind that. Um, so the second of the pillars is Salah, okay? Salah is spelled as in Muhammad Salah, but um, it, it just means the daily prayers, okay? The five daily prayers that Sunni Muslims perform. Sunni Muslims would say five daily prayers. Shia Muslims would say um, three day. well, they would... Shia Muslims do them in three prayers, but actually they double up the first two prayers. So it's five prayers, but sort of not spread out as much. The five daily prayers for Sunni Muslims are spread throughout the day to show that the religion is at the heart of their sort of like life, like the religion is at the heart of everything they do. Whereas uh, Shia Muslims are like, no, we're going to split these prayers up. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Where Sunni Muslims will be like one in the morning, mid morning, midday, afternoon, evening. Okay, they're just more spread out for Sunni Muslims. It, it's a sort of argument between the two faiths. But that's a, uh, if there's so, if there's a question about how explain two contrasting ways uh, that salary is performed, you can definitely mention the three or the five. Okay, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Is he all the way back there? I thought he was just chilling out there. Is he going to be back in the room when I do this? No. Cool. What was that? What's that? What's that? The game just closed. What was that? I have to start up again. I hate this. What was that experience? Did I do something wrong? Right. Okay. Oh, this is very uncomfortable for me. So, um, ideally all prayers should take a place in a mosque, but that isn't always the case. Uh, and can be done anywhere because God is omnipresent. If God is omnipresent, then you can pray anywhere. Oh, ain't this. Um, Oh, this idiot on the phone. Before you pray, you must perform something called wudu. Wudu is technically an ablution. Ablution means like a ritualistic wash, a wash you do for a special purpose. So Muslims perform a, a, a wudu. So you wash your arms, feet, uh, face, uh, water around your nostrils, in your mouth, around your ears, uh, top of your head. Okay, um, it's not so much about being... You shush. It's not as much about being physically clean as it is about being sort of uh, ready to interact with God. Uh, so you're getting clean so you can interact with God. Um, so, you know, it, this is, you know, a sign of respect. It's a sign of sort of um, obedience. Um, various actions are carried out when you pray. Uh, the raka are the positions that Muslims get into. Sort of bending over and stuff like that. A nice one, you can always talk about that, is that um, Muslims place their head onto the floor. Uh, prostration. This idea that prostration. Prostrate. You are prostrate. Sorry, I always pronounce that slightly wrong. It's the idea that you are showing God how worthy he is of worship. Oh my God, it's always the rabbit. 
And then look, where's he sprinted off to? Just legging it. Is he down here already? Right, closing. What is this when it always does this thing? Oh, I hate you so much. Right, turn off that light at least. Right, where is that fruit loop? Well, you're there. Where's the stupid rabbit? You back in there? No, it's just you chilling out in there. Oh my god. I hate that rabbit. So, there he is. Got ya. Right, I can open that door again to save some lecky. Because it's like real life, just trying to save lecky because it's too expensive. Right, so they put the head upon the floor to show God how much worthier is than worship. Um, a nice difference you could talk about that if it was talking about, like, explain two different ways that Muslims perform um, the uh, prayers. Uh, Shia Muslims place their head upon uh, something called a turba. It's a small, like, um, stone, or a clay disc. It's not really stone. It's something made of, uh, of clay because it's a show that the Prophet Muhammad placed his head upon the earth and not upon a carpet, so you should try to as well. That should be the aim. Oh, wait. there he is. Okay, good. You're there. I'm perfectly fine. If you're hanging out there, I'll open that for a little bit. No, you've moved straight away. Right, I'm closing that again. Idiot. Idiot. Um, the, the most important day of prayer is a Friday. Uh, Friday prayers are considered the most important. Uh, Friday is often considered the holy day in Islam. And so Friday prayers are called Jumma prayers and every man would be expected to attend the mosque on a Friday. That would be the day when uh, you would attend the mosque. Um, so, And then you can talk about why prayers are important in just sort of a general sense. You can talk about how um, prayer... Oh, where has he gone now? Oh, there's him. I don't know what he wants. I hate him as well. That f bunny just goes wherever he wants. And like, his whole attitude is just terrible. And that camera never works. I'm never going to get through these days. I just hate this so much. Um, so some quotes. So prayer is generally important because you're connecting with God. It brings people together because Muslims should be praying together at the mosque. Uh, I'm never going to. I'm only at two a.m. and I've only got half my power left. But he's not there or there. There he is. There he is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Knew you're up to something. Knew it. Um, so you can say it brings people together, okay? Uh, some quotes for this. Uh, there's a nice short one. And be steadfast in prayer. Now, the full quote is a lot longer, but in terms of the exam, you could just say in the Quran it says, and be steadfast in prayer. That would be like a reason why Muslims pray. Steadfast means uh, to be regular, to be sort of um, steady, essentially, and in regularly pray. Uh, do not give up on your prayer. Uh, uh, and I'd say that's the easiest quote for that one. What was that noise? Okay, he's still there. The chick is the chickens. Where's the chicken? Why oh, it's, it's, I only got forty percent of my battery left. Oh my god! Where's that stupid chicken? Go back there, chicken. Well, what are you doing? There's you, chicken. Okay, fine. I can leave that door. Fine. This chicken's not there yet. Okay. Sorm. S-A-W-M. Sorm is the Muslim... Oh, you were there. There, oh, you're coming. Close that door for a bit. Where's the geezer on this side? Where's the fox? You in the cupboard? Yeah, okay. Okay. Rabbit, we'll open that door for a little bit. It's 3am. I'm never going to get through to 6am because my battery's going to run out and I don't know how to do it. Um, Sorm is, is often referred to as just Ramadan. Um, but Ramadan's a month of the year. It's not actually the process of fasting. So when people say a oh, Muslim is doing Ramadan, it doesn't really make linguistic sense. That's like saying a Muslim is doing July or doing August. Um, Ramadan is a month of the Muslim calendar where Muslims uh, try and avoid um, food and drink during daylight hours. Um, you, you might also, well, um, often Muslims avoid uh, having sex and smoking during Ramadan as well. It's a sign when uh, a month, oh my God, where's he gone? Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know what I'm meant to do apart from wet myself. This is awful. This is so awful. So for the 28 days normally, roughly, of the month of Ramadan, because it's a lunar cycle, which is how long it takes the moon to, to go around the earth. Yeah, to go around the earth. So horrible. As it takes the moon to go around the earth. Um, Muslims have to try and focus on their fate. So it's a time um, 
of sort of renewed prayer, of renewed time focusing on God. Uh, stay there, you three. Stay there, you three. Okay. Um, it, it runs, it commemorates uh, the Night of Power, uh, which took place during the uh, month of Ramadan, which is when Muhammad received the Holy Book of the Quran. Oh my God. What? What? Brilliant. So where's he now? Is he in there? Oh. I hate him so much. He's just going to absolutely cause me to have an heart attack. So during the month of Ramadan, Muhammad received the Quran. So Muslims nowadays uh, spend the month fasting in sort of to remember this event. Uh, it's also um, a good time to remember how fortunate you are um, to have food. And so you sort of empathize and sympathize with those people who, who maybe don't have enough food and drink. Okay, So you fast for a month to sort of understand their sort of not suffering, but yeah, maybe suffering, their, their, their plight, their, their, what they're going through to empathize with other people. Um, some people are exempt from fasting, that's always a nice fact to go from. Um, children um, under 12 normally don't have to fast. Um, you know, children generally don't fast. Um, pregnant women. Oh, what is this? When he does that thing where his head appears. Um, uh, people with medical conditions, the elderly, um, so diabetes, you wouldn't have to fast because it would be incredibly dangerous for you. Uh, women who are pregnant or are breastfeeding. Um, and uh, people often give do good deed to charity acts because it's like uh, during this time, um, your good deeds are sort of, I always say multiplied. I don't know a better word for it. Like uh, that they're worth more during this time. So it's it's an act of fasting. You are showing your dedication commitment by sort of taking something away from yourself, and you're showing Allah that dedication commitment. But you're also understanding and empathising with others. You're you're spending more time praying and spending these months sort of being holy. You might avoid music. You'll avoid sex because your focus is on your religion during this month. Um, and then a nice quote for this one that I always uh, like to teach my classes is, "Ah, oh, where's he gone now?" Please say you've gone back to there. No. Oh, you're back there, chicken. You that side. Oh, I don't know where he is. I just hate him. Um, fasting has been prescribed to you. So prescribed, like a medicine is prescribed to you. This is the idea that it's sort of like, um, it's something that is healthy for you. It's something that's helping you. This is a positive for you. It, it's helping you get into heaven. It's helping you be a better person. So this fasting has been prescribed to you. Where is that stupid rabbit? What is wrong with you? Why are you so determined to scare me? What did I do to upset you? I've been nice to rabbits. I have a rabbit. I look after him really nicely. And yet you spend your time trying to make my life a misery. Um, yeah, uh, and a nice quote. I'll do another quote that sort of links with this on the next one, which is uh, Zakat. So Zakat, Z-A-K-A-H. If I had like any video skills, I'd have these words like appear places on the screen, but I don't have those skills. I've just got... Fear, there he is. Oh, I can open my door for a little bit so I can save some lecky. Right, you still there? Yes, you're still there. I know where you are. I know where you are. I know where you are. Zakat, uh, Z A K A H, sometimes said Zakat uh, or spelt Zakat as well, but it's Zakat. Is how the example would probably spell it. They might also call it giving arms. They might put how does a, a Muslim give arms brackets zakar or, or or work with charity. You can say zakar. Uh, it involves a sharing of wealth. All Muslims are expected to donate uh, around 2.5 percent of their uh, money to charity every year. Uh, this money would come out of your um, profits at the end of the year. Uh, profits, not as in the Prophet Muhammad, as in profits, as in financially. Oh my God, where have you gone now, you fruit loop? There. Close the door. He's coming this way. See, save the lucky. Yes. Right. Um, the money is often used to help the poor, the needy. Uh, the needy is often mentioned there directly. Uh, Travellers, um, relatives. Um, uh, who else? Orphans is a big one, and that's a nice, easy one to talk about in the exam. Helping orphans. Where has he gone now? I hate him so much. He doesn't seem to come over here so much. Where has he gone? I don't care, I've got the door closed anyway, whatever. Um, orphans is a good one because the Prophet Muhammad was an orphan from a very young age. His father died before he was born, his mother died when he was very young. So you can say Muslims would give the money to orphans. The Prophet Muhammad was an orphan, they'd like to help out orphans. Um, 
then there's other forms of charity as well. You can do Sadaka. Sadaka is any extra money you give to charity. S A D A Q A H S A D A K A. That's any extra money you give. You give money to a homeless person. Sadaka. Okay. Uh, you give money to one of them pots in a shop that's like just an extra charity donation. Sadaka. You go and give your time up to a charity cause. Sadaka. Okay. You can you can add that in there. And then Shia Muslims also give another form of charity. Oh, you. Right. Turn the light on. Go away. Oh, that upset him. I've got so little power left, I can't get through two days. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he's gone away. Open the door for a little bit, yeah? Where's he gone? Is he in the cupboard? Yes. Okay, open the door for a little bit. Stay in that cupboard. Stay in that cupboard. Stay in that cupboard. Stay in that cupboard. Um, Muslims give an extra form of charity called Coombs. Um, Coombs is uh, an extra 10% of money given to charity that the Shia Muslims give to their government. Um, all sort of the religious leaders in their faith. Oh, door. Oh, I don't know where he's gone. Um, to sort of protect the faith. You know, we talked last time about the imamate. The imamate are the human leaders of the religion. Well, part of that... Oh, I heard a noise. Part of that human leadership is, is giving cooms. Okay, I'm just going to keep that door open for a little bit because I haven't got enough power to get through. I don't know what's going on. Um... So, uh, now, a nice quote for this one that links with Sorm is, um, he who eats while his brother goes hungry is not one of us. So you could use that as a reference to Sorm and fasting. He who eats while his brother goes hungry is not one of us. Perfect reference to Sorm. But you can also use it as a reference to um, uh, Zakat, that, that, like the idea that if you're not paying your charity to help other people, then like um, you, you are eating while your brother goes hungry because you have money and yet your brother your fellow not as in literally your brother as in your fellow man does not have money so he is going hungry um there's a longer quote you shall give alms to the relatives the needy the poor and the traveling alien alien means someone from outside your country uh, but do not be excessive extravagant the idea that you should give a little not everything you're not trying to show off with the amount you're giving okay oh, i'm going to run out of this thing so i'm just going to open it and just hope that he doesn't come there because it's going to I'm never going to make it to the morning, am I? He's there. I'm just going to keep the doors open. and No. Oh, what am I going to do? Is, I'm going to run out of power. And now he's going to scream at me again. Okay. And the last of the five pillars. Oh, my God. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. The last of five pillars is Hajj. Hajj is, uh, is a pilgrimage that all Muslims must make at least once in their lives. Um, during the holy month of Al-Hiraj. Like Ramadan was a month, Al-Hiraj is a month. So all Muslims... Oh my God. Oh my God, I hate this so much. Have I made it? Did I do it? No, he's going to shout at me again. That's the bear. He always shouts at me when I run out of electricity. It's like the... Oh. oh, no. Oh, I hate this. So Hajj is the pilgrimage that all Muslims must make at least once in their lifetime to Mecca. Mecca, oh, this has been going so long. Mecca is the holy city for all Muslims. Um, and if you go outside of this month, it's known as Umrah. Um, Umrah is just going to Mecca and any other time of performing this. But if you go during this holy month, it's called doing the Hajj. Um, so during this time, it's sort of the largest gathering of sort of people on earth. Um, and you're sort of following the footsteps of Muhammad, who, who performed the first Hajj. Um, so it sort of commemorates the history of Islam. Lots of the things they do reference different parts of sort of the history of the religion. I've got to do this again, and I? There's no way I'm completing this game. I'm still on the same night. I'm still having the same nightmare experience with this stupid rabbit. Some of you even gave me tips at work this week. You were going, oh, turn the light on when he's meant to be there and like watch out for the fox. But it's just this rabbit is relentlessly hunting me down and shouting at me. And if I keep the door open, he's going to shout at me. But if I close the door, then the bear shouts at me. This is awful. Right, so some of the rituals. Oh, uh, some of the rituals Muslims perform. Uh, oh, my glasses! I've put my fingerprints all over my glasses now. Now I can't see. So some of the rituals Muslims perform in the Hajj. First of all, getting to a state of Iram. Um, 
this is wearing a simple white cloth um, and this is to show that every Muslim is equal at this point. You're all wearing white, it's a sign of purity, you're all wearing white because uh, while doing the Hajj, you're, you're removing your sins. It's a way of freeing yourself from sins. So when the white is a symbol, is a symbolic of removing those sins and it's a, a sign that you're equal with your fellow Muslims on the Hajj. All, oh, the rabbit has gone again. Of course it's the rabbit. It's never the other ones. The other ones are really safe and nice. But the rabbit has got to be getting up to no good. So I'm closing that door, even though it's using all my electricity, and that's what the problem is, because electricity is so expensive nowadays, I clearly can't afford to put money in the meter anymore, because the energy cap's gone up, because of the war in Russia. I don't know if the game takes into account the war. Oh, my God. Right, uh, so once you get to Mecca, you're wearing your white robe to show your purity and show your equality with other Muslims. I mean, he's not... There he is. There he is. There he is. Hates you. Hate you. You're showing your equality with all our Muslims. But while you're there, you go to something called the Kaaba. Now, Kaaba I've shown you in lessons. It's this large black box. It's not massive. It's only about the size, sort of height-wise, of the school. But this is um, the Kaaba is one of the most ancient sort of objects in the religion. Uh, it was said to originally been built by the prophet Adam, then destroyed by the flood of Noah. N not the Noah's flood, but the flood that Noah was involved with. Oh my God! I'm on now 83% battery already. This is worse than like my phone. And he's still just lurking in the corridor like the freak he is, just being weird. Mm. Oh my lord. So when you get there, the, and the Kaaba was flood, uh, destroyed by Noah's flood, so Ibrahim then rebuilt the Kaaba. Uh, and um, this is when he built it. He, he destroyed the statues and went around it, destroying the statues, because that's when people used to worship many gods. So you circle the Kaaba to show that it's at the centre of your faith, to show it's at the centre of your religion. You go around anti-clockwise. This is called the Tawaf, T-A-W-A-F, I believe. Um, and you're showing that the sort of it's the centre of your universe. The Kaaba is actually what every Muslim faces towards when they pray. I should have said that when the prayer one. I don't know if I did or not, because I'm getting so stressed out, because this thing keeps shouting at me. Oh, no, I didn't check where he is. I just open that door. Is he in the cupboard? Yes, he's in the cupboard. Hang on. No, he's right outside the door. Right, what if I turn the light on and open it? Does that make him go away? No, he's still there. How do I make him go away? Go in that cupboard. Wahoo corner. Why don't you keep that door closed? Right. The power's going to run out though. Oh, then he shouts at me again. Right, uh, once you're in Mecca as well, so you've gone around the Kaaba, you then run, and, and I don't know how many people actually physically do it as a full sprint, but you sort of do this journey between these mountains, Safa and Marwa, or these two hills really. You do the journey, seven journeys, because when Ibrahim's wife was lost in the desert, she ran between these uh, sort of hills, and then she found a well. So there's a well in the middle of it where Muslims can pick up a, a, a water they call Zamzam water, um, to sort of recreate create this moment. It's a lot about recreating the most important moments in the history of the religion. So that's remembering this moment from the Prophet Ibrahim's life. Uh, Muslims then go to Mount Arafat and pray for forgiveness. Mount Arafat is one of the places where Muhammad gave his last sermon, his last message. So this is an important place in the history of the religion. Again, oh my god, 53% and it's only 2 a.m. Has he gone? Is he in the cupboard? Where's he gone? Is he... Yes, there he is. Okay, I'll have the door open for a little bit. Because you, you little weirdo, you're just chilling out in there, and that's fine. Stay in that room. Where's the chicken? Where's the chicken? Why are you there? You, get back in your house. Let's eat. I'm bleeding KFC later because of you. Oh, it's midnight. Can't be getting KFC at midnight. I'll upset everyone. Right. I hate you both so much. Chicken. God, this is so stressful. Um, so they go to Mount Arafat. Um, then you go to Muzdalifa. Muzdalifa is like these plains, uh, like this sort of, not fields, because they're not sort of green, but like these sort of stony bits of desert. And Muslims go there and collect these pebbles. Um, you spend the night there, you often camp there in these sort of tents. Uh, and then you'll go to these things called the pillars at Mina. And at Mina, there are these three giant pillars. Each pillar represents the devil. And you take your handful of pebbles and you throw your pebbles at the, the pillars. And that's meant to represent the idea that you're driving the devil away. Um, Ibrahim, uh, when uh, Ibrahim, when he was sort of being tempted, to, well, when God told him to kill his son, uh, the devil te tried to tempt him into not doing it. So the devil was like, oh, you don't need to do that. That's fine. God's trying to make you do a bad thing. And so Ibrahim drove him away by throwing stones at him. So Muslims now 
You go and get the stones and throw them at the pillar and you sort of drive the devil away and it's sort of trying to remove temptation from your life. So if you were trying to sort of like give up smoking or gambling or something like that that you know is a vice, a sin, you're like, right, I'm going to sort of like throw these stones at these pillars and I'm going to sort of try and drive these temptations away. It's obviously symbolic, it's not real, they don't expect the pillar to run away. Oh my god, door, door. See all the cameras back. Okay, you're still there, you're just annoying. But where the hell is that guy? See, he's always causing me trouble. Right, I'm going to keep that one open. Because if you're just going to stand there creeping me out, I don't mind that door being open. 25%. Oh my god, it's still not enough power. Um, and, and pilgrimage to the house is a duty owed to God. That's the quote for you. Pilgrimage to the house is a duty owed to God. The house, the house of God, the Kaaba. 22%. This is so unfair. I'm going to run out of power and that thing is going to jump out at me again. And it's going to make me really scared again. And I'm Hey, you're there. Okay, door open. Let's save the power. You're there. You're there. Let's just try and save as much power as possible. Okay, uh, that's the Hajj. Okay, it's bringing Muslims together, showing equality between Muslims, but mainly it's re it's remembering the history of the faith. Uh, but also, by the time you finish Hajj, you're meant to be free of sin. Okay, and Hajj leads nicely into one of the festivals. Okay, um, the festivals break down to three sort of main festivals. The example I'd want to talk about. Oh my God, where's he gone now? There he is. Okay, he's coming towards me. So, close that door. Right, he's that side somewhere. So, while uh, Muslims are doing Hajj, at the end of Hajj, uh, there's Eid al Adha. Eid al Adha is a festival to remember the sacrifice of Ibrahim. Oh, I'm running out of power again. This is so unfair. Are you in the cupboard or somewhere? Where are you? Back there? No. You're just there being a weird. Look at that. Where is he? I'm just going to keep it open because I've got 8% pounding. He's going to shout at me and I'm going to hate it. I'm going to cry. So Eid al Adha remembers um, that Ibrahim was willing to sacrifice uh, his son, okay, Ishmael. So it's a sort of festival to remember that. So what Muslims will do is they'll often uh, traditionally get a goat or a ram or a bit of livestock and they'll have it sacrificed. You would normally. Um, in a sort of a traditional Muslim country, you might uh, have that action done yourself, or you might have it done sort of out of butchers. In this country now, it's more common just to buy the meat and to donate it to charity and share with your family, uh, because you just trust your local butcher to do it for you. You'd obviously have it done in a halal way, the throat being slit and stuff like that, but you wouldn't worry so much about killing the animal yourself in this country necessarily. The celebration is a time of joy. It can go for about four days. Um, it, it's, it's sort of presents being exchanged, but it's remembering this historical event. So if Christmas is remembering the historical event of Jesus' birth for Christians, um, Eid al Hadda, Eid al Hadda, I E I D, E I D space U L uh, dash A D H A. Once again, if I had computer skills, I'd have that all up here on the screen. No, I'm going to run out of power again. I hate this. Oh my god. See? See? Right. I'm ignoring him because he's just so rude, okay? So, the other big uh, festival is... No, I'm not even looking at that door. I'm looking at that door this time because he's always at that door making faces. So the other uh, big festival that starts with the word Eid is Eid al-Fitra. And this is confusing because we have Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitra. See? You're at that door being a fruit loop. Yeah, I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. So Eid al-Fitr is celebrated at the end of Ramadan, which we've talked about when we talked about Sorm, okay? Ramadan is the month, so Eid al-Fitr happens at the end of the month, okay? Not the end of the fasting, at the end of the month. Oh my god, hate it, hate it. Um, it's... Yeah! I did it! I did it! <laughs> oh my god! I hate it, but I did it. I'm going to give myself 30 seconds. Oh no, not again. I thought I'd get that screen. Oh yeah, because I didn't die. Mate, stop phoning me. I need you to leave me alone. Can I turn the light off? To save power. What's using all the power? Right. Go away. Oh, your chicken's gone already. Where's the chicken gone already? I can't believe the chicken's out already. I've lost track of it. So Eid al-Fitr is sort of a celebration uh, at the um, 
uh, the end of uh, Ramadan. So the end of Ramadan, you have a special celebration, and it's a celebration often around sort of the consumption of food, uh, because obviously, okay, I can have the door open because you're hiding over there. So you're being weird. You like standing there and just staring at me. It's fine. It's like a kid in a, like you know when you're little and you go shut the front door. You're little, you get into like the store where it's got the camera, you can see it on the screen and you stare at it. It's like that. Um, Muslims will also make a donation at this point, so, so everyone uh, the less fortunate can eat at this time because obviously through Ramadan you've just spent this month like uh, not eating as much as you, you can and sort of fasting for long periods of time. So Muslims like to try and remember the less fortunate at that time. So Eid al-Fitr is a time when you will consume and be with your family, but also try and make sure that everyone is fed on that day. Um, you'd often go to the mosque, um, but it's a time of celebration. Um, often um, new clothes are given as a gift, and this is so that you can have a fresh start for the rest of the year. It's like you, you've you've gone through this time of sort of cleansing of Ramadan, so you can have a fresh start for the rest of the year. Where are you now? You're just there hanging outside the door. Cool. That's not weird. Let's eat. Um, so that's Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Fitr is more celebrating the end of Ramadan. It's about a meal. It's about bringing people together. Eid al-Adha is about remembering the, the sacrifice that Ibrahim was willing to make. Okay, Ashura. Ashura is the one that you will remember for the one very specific thing that happens in it, which is, oh my God, you chicken, you're so annoying. Oh, I don't know. I bet, no doubt, every, I don't know. Shut the door. Run out of electricity. Okay, you're still there, okay. Yeah. That door open then. Somebody's going to hit me in a second and I hate it. Ashura you remember from seeing Shia Muslims using the swords to cut their foreheads. Okay, uh, tapping them on the foreheads and sort of cutting those ones. We've all seen that video. It's really memorable. But Ashura is celebrated by both Sunni and Shia Muslims. It's just probably a, a, a bigger, more remarkable event for Shia Muslims. For Shia Muslims, the festival is remembering... Um, the sac well, the the the, um, not sacrifice, the martyrdom of Hussein. Hussein was Muhammad's grandson. Okay, so Muhammad's grandson. So he has his son-in-law Ali, and that's Ali's son. Okay, he's one of the imamate that we did about last time. That everyone always forgets what the imamate are. Okay, the chicken is gone. Oh. Oh, what is happening? What are you doing? I don't like you either. You look like you're that side of the world. Where's the chicken? Okay, you're there. So let's open up that door for a bit. <sighs> so what they're doing when they hit the heads with the swords is remembering that Hussein was killed. A martyr is someone who dies for their religion. Hussein uh, was a Shia Muslim. Um, he was the leader of the Shia Muslims. He was beheaded by a man called Caliph Yazid. Uh, Caliph Yazid was a sort of a, a sort of a, religion, a leader at the time. He captured Hussein and basically went, "Oh, if you uh, sort of like." Uh, abandon your faith and stuff like that. Ah, ah, ah. Oh. If you abandon your faith and stuff like that, I will, I will sort of, um, I will let your men live, uh, and uh, you know, I, I will give you burial. And he's like, no, I won't. And so they decapitate him and they kill all of Hussein's men, and they cut their bodies up and spread them around the desert. And it's meant to be this, it's this sort of historical sort of moment of this ultimate sacrifice that Hussein was willing to make. Oh my God, you're there and you're out. So you... well, I've got the door closed. What do I do about you? Okay, so you're back there. So I can open that door again? Mm. Where's the rabbit? Both of them are gone. Where's the rabbit? Where's the bear? I didn't know the bear could leave. Oh, the bear's definitely going to jump out on me when I close this computer down, in it? I've only got 26% left. Um, so for Shia Muslims, it's this time of uh, remembering this sacrifice of a saint. So they, this act of hitting themselves with a sword is called technically self-flagellation, self-punishment. Okay, but you can just say uh, they, they harm themselves to remember the sacrifice that Hussein did. Uh, they make themselves bleed to remember the blood that Hussein spilt. Uh, Hussein's blood that was spilt. That he was willing to have his blood spilt. In this country, uh, many Shia Muslims on this day uh, choose to give blood. Uh, they choose to give blood as a sign that they too are willing to bleed for their religion. Um, right. Where? What is that? Right, I'm going to open that door because I don't know where he is. I'm just going to try and save the electricity for as long as possible. Clearly I'm going to run out. It's 10%. I don't know how to do it. I got through the other day. Maybe I'll just stay still. That happened work last time. Um, 
so they give blood because this is showing that you're willing to give blood uh, you know you're willing to give your blood for your religion as well um, other things that um, Shia Muslims do is they might reenact the battle and stuff like that to remember an event. So for Shia Muslims, Ashura is more about remembering this important event in their religion and sort of reenacting it, okay? Reenacting the sacrifice, the martyrdom of a saint. Um, whereas for Sunni Muslims, uh, I'm just going to open that door. I'm sure I'm going to get squished. I don't care. Uh, Sunni Muslims, uh, you're remembering the story, uh, stories of like Noah and Moses at this time. You're, you're remembering this idea of fasting. And Ashura is not a time of sort of like self-flagellation and hitting yourself oh my god i've got no battery i'm just going to sit here for uh, no, it's 4 a.m yeah 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 this again well that will last my one when this happens it's not gonna happen for an hour oh so for uh, sunny muslims it's a time of remembrance it's two days of fasting a time of repentance apologizing for your sins what's happening is this where he's doing the light thing that side oh i'm not looking at you not looking at you. No, not looking at you. Oh. Stupid bear. Where were you? The rabbit at least stayed still. Right, and the final topic is jihad. Um, there's two forms of jihad. There's the greater jihad and the lesser jihad. And I'll go through these really quickly. Uh, the greater jihad is the idea that there's... Uh, the jihad just means struggle. That's the word it means, to struggle. Okay. Um, I, don't, I can't start again. I'm just going to do the jihad. I cannot start that again. It's just going to upset me too much. The word jihad uh, means struggle. And for a lot of Muslims, a lot of people outside of the faith, this can be greatly misunderstood by people. They're like... Oh, jihad just means terrorist. It certainly doesn't within the faith. It's not meant to mean that. It means a struggle to do the right thing every day uh, because it can be striving and struggling. You know, the struggle of day-to-day -day life. So the jihad is split into two parts, the greater jihad and the lesser jihad. And the greater jihad is the day-to-day -day struggle, the struggle to pray five times a day, the struggle to fast during Ramadan, the struggle to give up the money to charity. That is the greater jihad, okay? The struggle to do the right thing because you're being judged by the angels on your shoulders at all times, okay? That is the greater jihad, the greater struggle. The lesser jihad is a struggle to, to make the world a better place and to protect the religion. Um, and part of this is to defend the religion against physical threats, okay? It can be the struggle to make the world a better place to, through your actions, as in helping others, but it can also be the struggle to defend it violently, okay? Um, so like a Muslim has a duty to defend the religion, not to fight people, not to attack people, and jihad cannot be used to, to justify many acts of terrorism that extremists have claimed it can justify. That is not justifiable in the Quran. He who kills one is as if they killed all of mankind. You can't take lives that are not by way of justice and law. These are all quotes, okay? And even just the very simplest, Allah does not love the aggressor. You cannot start this conflict. People disagree and agree about, you know, what starts conflicts. But, like, the taking of innocent life is forbidden in the Quran. So the letter jihad cannot be used to justify acts of terror in this way, okay? And there's many rules for fighting in that. And when we do the, the theme where we talk about war, we can talk about that in more detail. But in this exam, you could have jihad come up as a sort of a four or five mark question where it says, explain uh, two contrasting ideas of jihad. That would be a lovely question. The greater jihad means the personal struggle to do the right thing every time. The lesser jihad is a struggle to defend the faith against attack, for example. Just explaining that Allah does not love the aggressor, little quote, bang, throw that one in there. That would be a really nice question. A 12 mark question about jihad could work as well. Uh, in it might be like jihad is one of the most important beliefs within the faith or is the most important belief in the faith and or practice of all muslims or all muslims should defend their religion through jihad and then you'd have to sort of compare and contrast it to the other sort of pillars maybe it depend on how the question is phrased but as long as you've got this split between the greater jihad and lesser jihad and you can rely on that and be like you know that the greater jihad is the struggle and the lesser jihad is the sort of uh, the defend the faith that is your main idea that you're going to get into that okay and Allah does not love the aggressor and I don't love that rabbit I don't the chick's never really done anything to me but I really hate that bear so thank you guys for watching this one uh, I think I can press two buttons and stop the video